Welcome to a new video lecture for the course Multimodal Communication. This lecture will basically summarize what the five preceding lectures in this course have discussed in further detail. These lectures have presented important parts of the theoretical chapters of the textbook Multimodality from 2017. With this, we have mainly focused on part one of the book. For all further analyses, the methods chapters in part two as well as the use case chapters in part three of the book, give more practical guidelines and examples. While we will repeat the most important definitions and concepts of this book as a final summary now in the following, it is strongly recommended that you look at all the other use case chapters whenever you start doing some analyses with concrete artifacts. For very typical and also many other non-typical artifacts, you find example analyses and example descriptions following the methods and tools presented in this book in the use case chapters. To start with a wrap up, here is the definition of multimodality as presented on the first pages in the book. Multimodality is a way of characterizing communicative situations here considered very broadly, which rely upon combinations of different forms of communication to be effective. And right from the beginning, the book gives many different examples of these communicative forms, both showing traditional as well as also relatively new ways of communicating with different expressive forms. We talk about TV programs using spoken language, pictures and texts. We talk about books, using written language, pictures, diagrams, page composition, and so on. We analyze face-to-face -face interaction, for example, in the cafeteria. And we also analyze computer games, Instagram postings, and tweets. The definition of multimodality then also applies to the different examples we have discussed throughout the lectures situations of video conferencing or online seminars where participants are sitting in front of a computer screen, contributing to interactions with chat messages or video messages, or as in the second and the third picture, interactions in, situ um, in situations of business meetings where participants work on and with several other media or look at a shared screen, for example. In all these situations, Different media and modes are at work, and all these create meaning, often in complex combinations and interrelations. In order to be able to address this complexity, multimodal analyses need a robust way of systematizing the situations, their media, and their modes. For this, we've first looked at the problem space of multimodality with different strands and disciplines building a basis for all further consideration. We've learned that materiality as well as the societal and cultural context play an important role to locate this problem space and the phenomenon of multimodality as such. And we've also learned that structures and patterns of our languages are observable in all sorts of material even if it is nonverbal. These structures then can and should be addressed with a general semiotic approach. And this general semiotic approach differs from more traditional approaches in semiotics, in that it does not just look at the meaning-making patterns or the semiotic modes of each situation, but instead in that it focuses on the situation as a whole, with the media and participants embedded as important characteristics to be analyzed multimodally. The starting point for every multimodal analysis is then in fact to look at the communicative situation in which we find multimodal artifacts or performances. For a systematic approach, three conditions have to be met to define a communicative situation for analytical purposes. The first condition is that we must know some particular range of material regularities that are to be considered to be carrying semiotic activity. 
A second condition says that this knowledge about the material regularities must be shared among a community of users. And as a third condition, there must be available a scheme for deriving interpretations from the material regularities identified. Only when these conditions are met, communicative situations occur, and in these communicative situations, then multimodal artifacts or performances are available to be analyzed. When these three conditions for a communicative situation are met, we can take this complex systematics of communicative situations that you can see here to categorize and characterize each communicative situation and the materialities it involves for all further analyses. With these systematics, we address the canvas of the communicative situation in question. And we describe this canvas as either static or dynamic, two or three dimensional, permanent or fleeting, and including participants or only observers. We also distinguish the different situations from each other according to the effort one has to put in the interpretation of the canvas. So when the canvas is mostly linear and we only have to read and listen something to something, as in an ordinary text or a rather traditional 2D film, we just call it a linear arrangement. But as soon as we have to do some sort of composition, when we have pages laid out in front of us where we have to find the red thread and the coherence, when we watch a film with split screens, montage with parallel editing, when we have graphic novels or infographics, then we call this, these things micro-ergodic canvases in which the effort we have to put in to understand and interpret the canvas is much more than just reading and listening. When this effort becomes more and more and we have to explore hyperlinks in a hypertext or um, not so explicit combinations in dynamic infographics, for example, but the, the objects and artifacts are not responding to our exploration, we call these art canvases immutable ergodic. And as soon as there is some interaction between the artifacts and performances and our efforts, they are mutable ergodic. On the basis of this characterization and categorization, we can then also describe the semiotic modes of each communicative situation. And we do this on the basis of a complex definition. This definition is every semiotic mode combines three semiotic levels, the material dimension, the technical features organized along several axes of description, which is described as form, and the level of discourse semantics. Since this definition is rather abstract and very complex, it is always good to look at concrete examples and to be reminded of the case studies we discussed in the previous lectures. In order to analyze both the communicative situation and the media and modes involved, we suggest eight steps of and in the multimodal navigator that should help you getting started with your own analysis. These are the eight steps. The multimodal navigator summarizes that for a comprehensive multimodal analysis, it is always necessary to start with the broad communicative situation you're dealing with. In this communicative situation, a specific focus lies on the media of this situation and their canvases and subcanvases, with which you also and mainly determine the focus of your analysis. The canvas is thus also your choice in determining the analytical focus. When you've analyzed the communicative situation, the media and the canvases, you can then finally identify the semiotic modes at work on the canvases and in the situation. And of course, in every academic work, you have to triangulate your research problem with respect to other work on these modes, genres or situations. So literature research is, of course, important 
to find similarities and differences between your work and the work of others. What we've not discussed in these previous lectures is how to perform the actual analysis using analytical frameworks available for the media and genres. Some of them are introduced in the method chapters, and there's also a detailed chapter about statistical calculations and evaluations. Some others, more concrete ones, are given in the use case chapters in the, in the third part, and we can only recommend that you have a look at the respective chapters which help you analyzing your artifact. When you find a method and framework you want to follow and adjust for your own purposes, the aim is to find patterns and explanations for these patterns in the data you analyze. That is step seven of this navigator. And of course, you always have to write up your results, maybe for a research report as in this seminar, for a journal article or a book chapter or something else. So coming back to these examples again, and many more if you want, you should now be equipped with the correct definitions, concepts, and the first tools to start analyzing the situations depicted. And it then doesn't matter at all how complex the situation is, you always use the tools we presented in the book as a starting point for all multimodal analyses. So you first describe the communicative situation in which you find the artifact of performance. You describe how the media and modes are involved in this communicative situation and what kind of research results are coming out of this when you apply certain methods. So, have fun and explore multimodal analyses in all its dimensions. And let us know what your initial results are. Thank you for your attention.